After so many years of working with color pencils, it's time to make a guide full of tips and tricks to share everything I've learned so far and how to use them correctly. For many artists who want to transition from graphite to color pencils, this can seem daunting, trust me I've been there as well, but after you complete watching this video, you will have all the resources you need to start using them right away. In this tutorial, we will learn about the essential tools needed to work smarter and faster with color pencils, such as different types of paper and the difference between them, we will learn as well about the advantages and disadvantages of using these three types of sharpeners, how many kinds of erasers there are and how to use them, how to use the colored pencil techniques correctly, plus how to create highlights quickly and easily using different tools. With all of that being said, let's start learning about the color pencils. What materials do we need? The most important are, of course, the color pencils. This can be found in sets starting from 12 all the way up to 150 pencils. There are many brands on the market, but the most recommended are Faber-Castell Polychromos, Caran Dash Luminance and Prismacolor. The most important thing when looking for pencils is to look at how light fast they are. This attribute also plays an important role in the price difference. It's best to buy a small set Try it out and see how it works for you, so you don't buy a large set and end up realizing that it's not what you want in a pencil because we are all different and don't like the same things. Colored pencils come into types, wax-based and oil-based. A wax-based pencil has a very large amount of wax that has been added in the composition of their lid. They tend to be much softer, the tip wears off very quickly and they are prone to many breakages. One good thing is that this helps a lot in creating a lot of fast layers but they are very predisposed to wax bloom. Wax bloom is a natural oxidation process of wax based pencils just like rust is an oxidation of iron. It appears as a cloudy white film over a drawing or color laydown. If you have problems with wax bloom, simply wipe your drawing with a clean and dry cloth. Wax based pencils will wear off very quickly, they need to be sharpened very often when creating fine details. The best wax based pencils on the market are Caran Dash Luminance with the highest light fastness rate that can be found out there. Oil based color pencils use vegetable oil as a binder and tend to be harder they hold a sharp point and experience less breakage. They enable the artist to use many layers as they don't have the usual called wax bloom. These pencils are perfect for creating small fine details. Having a hard tip makes it much harder to grind, keeping its sharp point for a long time. Polychromos are, in my opinion, the best oil-based pencils. I've been using them for many years and they are of very high quality, being also light fast. Light fastness is how resistant to fading the color pencil pigment is when exposed to light or, to put it in other words, how quickly a drawing will yellow over time. Caran Dash Luminance claim that their pencils have the highest light fastness in the world. The light fastness rate can be found as well on the pencil itself, for example polychromos, being marked by a number of stars from 1 to 3. If you have a good search on Google, you can find lists with the light fastness rate of the pencils you want to use. Now let's talk about paper types suitable for color pencils. We have smooth paper, toned paper and textured paper. The smooth paper, as the name itself says, has a very fine surface with almost no texture whatsoever. A great advantage of this paper is that we don't have to use many layers to cover the texture for a smooth effect. The biggest disadvantage is that, being devoid of texture, it cannot cope with a light toned paper simply refers to paper that has a value other than white. It often comes in shades of grey, tan, black and blue. Drawing on toned paper is ideal for working faster. Drawings done on mid-range grey or brown paper can help you to use a wider range of values, light to dark, and to place shadows and highlights more deliberately. Use the value of the paper as one of the values in your drawing. Textured paper is the opposite of smooth paper. This has a rough look that must be covered by many layers, 
plus a lot of blending. Usually, this type of paper is intended for watercolors, but colored pencil artists prefer it as well for the possibility of adding a large number of layers. With this paper, you can also use the blending method with a solvent. Now that we talked about the pencils and the paper, which are the basis of starting a drawing, we also need essential tools for completing a drawing. The first in line is the solvent. This liquid can be used for a much faster blending of the colored pencils. The Exacto knife, also known as a precision knife. This very affordable tool must necessarily have a place in the case of the beginner artists being ideal for creating highlights. Isn't it so annoying when the paper keeps moving while drawing? I totally agree, so that's why masking tape is essential to keep it in place. Avoid using duct tape as this can cause some damage to the paper. Instead, use masking tape. A very important trick to be sure that the paper does not rip off at the end of the drawing when it needs to be removed is to take a piece of cloth and pass with the sticky part of the tape a couple of times over. By doing this, you will get rid of the glue on the tape, remaining with an ideal tool for a secure fixation of the paper. Another must-have tool to maximize the use of a pencil as much as possible are the pencil extenders. They can be found in all kinds of shapes and colors, with different weights, some having even two ends in which the pencil can be inserted. When the pencil can no longer be held in your hand, it should not be thrown away as it still has life in it, plus it also does well for your pocket, postponing the purchase of a new pencil for a little while. Using this tool is a piece of cake. First of all, Make sure it is unscrewed beforehand as the pencil will not fit if the metal part is too tight. With one hand hold the pencil and with the other hand the pencil extender. Insert the pencil and when it has reached the size you want, screw the metal part very tightly to fix it as well as possible and here you go, you just created a new full size pencil. The only minus point of this tool is that the pencil cannot be sharpened as easily as before. Another tool that you'll surely never have thought of being able to use in drawing is the sandpaper. What do we do when the pencil tip gets too dull or it breaks? Don't sharpen it right away using a traditional sharpener. First, try to utilize sandpaper instead. These pads are made specially for pencils. All you have to do is to hold the pencil and rub it on the sandpaper surface. Keep in mind to keep rotating it, otherwise you will only sharpen one side. You can apply this method until the tip of the pencil is no longer sharpenable. Try to rub the pencil as much as possible on the middle of the sandpaper pad to avoid dropping the pencil pigment and spreading it everywhere. As you can see, the end result is a very sharp tip, perfect for fine details. To clean the pencil residue from a paper, use a larger brush. The bristles need to be soft so they don't smudge the pencil on paper. To clean the paper, swipe it very lightly with the brush until there is no mess on the paper left. If you press too hard, you risk smearing the pencil pigment all over. It will be so perfect if the pencils would never blunt, but as we all know, unfortunately the perfect pencil has not been yet invented, but fortunately sharpeners have been invented, which are of many kinds. Let's start with the most famous and popular sharpener, the handheld one. The one I use now is of very high quality and has two slots, one for sharpening the pencil in full and the second one for refining the tip. This type is the most common but it has a very big disadvantage. Because it requires the use of both hands, without any support, the risk of breakage is higher because only by a wrong movement everything must be done from the beginning, so it requires a lot of attention. The manual sharpener unlike the previous one, requires only one hand involved in the process. All you have to do is to insert the pencil, then lock the sharpener, and then rotate the crank until the pencil stops sharpening. This is very handy, as this manual sharpener has a system that stops when the pencil reached the maximum size of the tip. Last but not least, the father of the previous two, the electric sharpener. Unlike the handheld and the manual sharpener, it does everything for you. All you have to do is to insert the pencil and witness the miracle. The advantage of using this type of sharpener is that you get a good result with a minimum of effort. The only drawback I can think about 
is the large size of it and that it's a bit expensive, but the one I used now was purchased from AliExpress at a very low price, the result being great. As with the sharpeners, this comes well in multiple sizes and types. The most used, especially by graphite artists, is the kneaded eraser, or also known by the name of putt eraser. This is a great invention because it can be modeled according to the preferences of each artist, being able to be used in large areas of a drawing as well as in small areas that require fine details. But how does this work? The pigment of the pencil will stick to its surface, leaving behind a clean trace named highlight. If it becomes too dirty, the first sign that this has happened is its blackening, so it has to be mixed until it becomes clean again. Another type of eraser is the pen type. It has a fine tip that helps create fine textures. The best on the market is the Tom Bomono Zero Eraser. An important piece of advice from my own experience using this one is that you have to clean the tip always after each usage as it will lift a lot of pigment that risks to be transferred to another area of the drawing leaving behind a dark mark that is hard to remove. Another tool that was invented to make our life easier as an artist is the electric eraser. It can work on batteries or needs to be charged. One disadvantageous thing about it is that you can't control the speed at which it rotates and you don't have a lot of precision as it vibrates and reduces the stability of the hand. Another unique essential tool is the indenting tool. This can be used especially for creating highlights before you even start out using the pencil. By applying a hard pressure, you will create some ditches in the texture of the paper that can be covered by pencil, always remaining white. Now let's learn about the color pencil techniques and how to use them correctly. Layering is simply placing one layer of color over another one. The first thing to keep in mind when using this technique is the pressure applied on the pencil, which must be as low as possible. If you press too hard, you will feel the texture of the paper too quickly, leaving no room for more layers. The pencil should be kept as far away as possible from the tip in order to release the weight applied to the pencil. Take your time and use circular motions to spread the pigment evenly on the paper's surface. This will assure you a smooth end result. It's very simple. The closer the hand is to the tip, the harder the tendency to press harder is. Avoid under any circumstances too much pressure on the pencil and to hold it too close to the tip. These two things are the opposite of the layering technique as you will turn layering into burnishing, which is in the wrong order. Also, do not rush and apply a movement only in one direction because you'll only create lines that will make the drawing look like it was made by a 5 years old kid. Burnishing involves layering and blending until no paper tooth shows through the color pencil layers. After all the colors are layered, the artist will burnish them using white or any light color depending on the desired effect. This process requires a lot of pressure on the pencil that can create wrist pain, so please make sure to take some small breaks between to protect your hand joints. In most cases, a colorless blender it is used that is practically a normal pencil but without any pigment so transparent. Its purpose is to push all the pigment of the pencil into the paper, leaving behind a smooth surface. This can also be done using a white pencil or a light color. Keep in mind, however, that by using a white pencil, you will also lighten the colors on which you applied the method. Blending using a solvent is a smart move if you want to shorten the whole process significantly because it is much faster than burnishing. To apply the solvent, you need a brush. The amount of solution should be very small, so when soaking the brush in solvent, pay attention to how loaded the brush is. All you are going to do is to brush over the created pencil layers, which turn into a watercolor-like pigment. A minus point is its strong smell, so I totally recommend to check the contents of the package before to avoid unfortunate situations, many people being allergic to this product. The only thing wrong with applying this method is to overload the brush with liquid. As you can see in my demonstration, the paper is floated with liquid, not having time to absorb it, resulting in the spreading of the wet pigment everywhere, which looks like a kind of mud. Also, the more liquid is applied, the stronger the odor. 
I really don't know what a drawing would be without highlights, so let's learn about them. The first and the most handy method is to use a white pencil. It won't always be able to create an entirely white highlight, especially applied over a dark color, it will only lighten the color considerably. The white pencil from Caran Dash Luminance is the most recommended for this purpose. Its creamy texture and opacity makes him the perfect candidate for this job. Using a pen eraser like the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser will guarantee a very strong white highlight. As I mentioned in the description of the essential tools, clean the tip after each application if you want not to mess up the drawing. This tool can be found in two types, with a rectangular or a round tip. If you only have a rectangular one, a tip from my personal experience is to cut its tip into a V-shape to create a sharp tip for fine details. It is said that the eyes reflect someone's soul, but I believe that the eyes in a drawing bring it to life. For this, use a white gel pen. It has a very strong white pigment that can be matched by the other types of erasers. Make sure you use a light fast one that will remain white for a long time. A white gel pen of poor quality will yellow in 5 of 10 years, taking all the life from the drawing. The indenting tool is the perfect solution if you are an artist who is always stressed when he has to draw animal whiskers. This technique should be used before starting to add the pencil, but be sure that the place chosen for the whiskers is the right one. The trench in the paper, once created, can no longer be removed or covered. All that remains to be done is to draw as usual without the stress of creating whiskers in the end. Those traces made in the texture of the paper will remain intact even after several colored pencil layers applied. Using an X-Acto knife to create highlights is one of the fastest and cheapest methods. It scrapes off the layers created by the pencils, leaving behind the original color of the paper. In short, it's like putting some earth on a piece of concrete. If you keep digging, you will eventually end up at the concrete, which will remain intact. A vital thing to know for this technique is to be sure that enough layers have been applied before using this knife. It is simple. If on the paper there is not enough pigment, this knife has nothing to dig in. A bonus tip, if the result is not white enough for your preferences, is to use the white pencil over to amplify the highlight. Now we came to an end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from it. I am posting one time a week and normally graphite, colored pencil or pastel related videos. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Have a nice day. Bye guys.